Hi guys, it's Lauren here, aka Flossibilities, back reviewing November. Um, it is the 4th of December today, Sunday 2022, um, and we are back with a very uh, Christmassy <laughs> floss tube. Um, looks a bit like Santa's cross over behind me. I uh, hope everyone's getting on well. Um, I'm a little bit late this month, there's been a lot going on, I'll fill you in in a minute. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry if you don't like Christmas, but I love it. So uh, we've got a very Christmassy backdrop, uh, Christmas jumper on, um, drinking from my Beatrix Potter Christmas mug, so cute. And uh, oh, and my nails probably look nuts because I'm wearing a candy cane set, all the colours of candy cane and they smell like candy cane. <laughs> So yeah, it's very Christmassy. Um, I hope everyone's getting on well. I've got a really exciting video today. Um, there is two, uh, well, FO and FFOs. Um, one's kind of a nearly FFO, I'll explain that in a bit. Um, but it's been quite a good stitching month, so I'm really excited for this video um, and to share with you all. Um, so let me just get you caught up first. I've got a few shout outs, um, we've got a bit of news and um, just some channel news. Um, so if you just bear with me two minutes and then we'll get onto the stitching. Um, so what happened in November? Um, for the most part, I just worked most of my annual leave I use in December. So I'm off now, for example, obviously, because it's the weekend, but I'm actually off until Thursday, just to get a bit caught up. Um, we only did the decks yesterday. Um, it's been a really, hectic month and November's predominantly just been working and um, mainly sorting out gifts. Um, I love giving gifts. It's one of my favourite parts of Christmas, but it is quite hectic. Um, I know you all know what I'm talking about. It's just like ordering, shopping. Oh, it's broke. Let's return it. Let's go and collect this. And, um, you know, Royal Mail's on strike, um, which is our kind of UK local courier service. So that's been uh, problematic. I understand why they're doing it though, but it has been problematic mail-wise. Um, so I was just kind of tootling along in November, getting kind of waiting to get to December and just kind of getting us prepared, getting all the gifts to the house because I just wanted everything in the house and then I can kind of relax and do more Christmassy things. And then, so basically I nearly, nearly didn't film t um, today if, if things hadn't changed, but basically on Wednesday just gone, I've got the news that, you know, the call that no one ever wants to get, which is that my nana, who um, had just kind of had a, a funny turn at home, went to hospital and they said she had a touch of pneumonia. Um, so we thought, you know, she'll get better. Um, but we got a call on Wednesday that it turned into double pneumonia and therefore potentially Wednesday was the last time we were going to see her. So it was a case of down in tools, left work, what just went just went and dropped everything to see her and the whole family was there and I thought on Wednesday that was going to be the last time I saw my nana and for some Christmas miracle um because it was kind of clear the doctor saw that she wasn't going to pull through she seems to have done um she actually seems to be on the mend and as of today she's actually at the point where she's even been able to sit in a chair on her own um, is eating, is, you know, she's talking, it, she's, everything seems to be positive. She's not out the woods yet, but I've gone from literally like, you know, so sad to ecstatic that she seems to be on the mend and felt okay to do this floss tube. So yeah, so if you are, um, my nan's very religious. So if you are a religious person, if you could send prayers to my nana, and if you're not religious, if you could send well wishes and good thoughts, um, to my nana, I would much appreciate it um, because she is the best Christmas present that anyone could ask for. So um, yeah, um, so that's been my November. Um, and I said that happened towards the end. So it's just been a bit manic and kind of everything Christmas stopped, you know, it was, that was more important. Um, so anyway, on to happier things. Um, I've got a few shout outs firstly. I've been meaning to shout out some of these people for a while and keep forgetting. Um, so the first person I want to shout out is uh, Darlene Dion Designs. Darlene is so sweet and gave me the most lovely shout out uh, a few weeks back. She's a floss tuber, she's also a designer, she's got her own Etsy shop and she's just a lovely lady, a very talented lady. 
um, and I would love if you could go and check her out too um, and just maybe have a look at her patterns and just see her on her floss tubes. Um, so thank you very much. That'd be lovely. Um, I also want to shout out um, Alicia from Adventures of Stitching. Um, Alicia is actually, she's actually got a lot of similar tastes to me. She's doing the Wind in the Willow style and she's much further than me. <laughs> She won't say that, but she is a lot further than me. Um, she's doing the Simple Pleasures um, Chris Dunfold coverage that I want to start soon. Um, yeah, she's just got a lot of similar tastes and she is so sweet and she's so lovely. And I would just love everyone to go check out Alicia as well. And then finally, thank you for those who let me know, um, but I'd been shouted out by Kelsey Lee and Things. Um, Kelsey, I need to catch up with some of your floss tubes. I think I've, I've just kind of briefly gone in um because i wanted to give you a shout out to say thank you so much for shouting me out um but i need to catch up more with yours so i'm i'm shouting you out and i won't be able to go and check you out but i'm going to be checking you out a bit more soon when things calm down so yeah so that's alicia from venture stitching kelsey from kelsey lean things and darlene from darlene dion designs okay fabulous so I also have a bit of news. Um, I was speaking to uh, the wonderful Sammy from Lizzie Little Loops, um, who's also a fellow floss tuber. And um, we were chatting on Instagram and she has very sweetly, her and Andrea, that's kind of the co-host, curly haired cross stitcher on Instagram, um, have invited me and Mama as a guest to their next retreat. They've got a few um, happening in 2023 and we've been invited to the summer retreat and I am so excited um, and full of gratitude that they have invited us. It's a lot closer than the last one for us. So we're gonna just do a day trip again on Sunday the 30th of July. Um, I'm not sure if there's tickets left or not. That'd be something you have to check with uh, Sammy or Andrea. Um, but what I can tell you and I'm so excited about um, is Michelle Michelle from Mama Loves UGB is going to this retreat. So if you're watching Michelle, I cannot wait to see you. Neither can Mama. So hopefully you're there on Sunday, uh, the 30th. Um, but yeah, very exciting. A few of you have asked me about the retreats because um, I did a segment on the one I went to in October last video. If you haven't seen that, you can go check it out. Um, so ultimately the, the kind of retreats are under the header of Floss Friends UK which is what Sammy from Lizzie Little Loops created. You can go on Facebook and just type in Floss Friends UK and go in and you know ask to be accepted and she will and then you'll come in and they do kind of stitch stitch alongs and chats and arrange chats and challenges and also to retreats and they've, they've arranged quite a few for next year. There's some great special guests um, so yeah, if you want to have a, you know, more information about it, either go on Floss Friends UK on Facebook. There's also under that same header on Instagram, you can find them. You can find Sammy by putting in Lizzie Little Loops on Instagram or Andrea, uh, the curly haired cross stitcher and just private message them. I think um, Sammy also has an email address, flossfriendsuk at gmail.co.uk.com, gmail.com, I think it is. I'll make sure I'll put the right one in the description. And if you're interested at all, please just reach out to them. They're so friendly and they will they will guide you in, you know, cost and where it is and all the different information you need. So yeah, please go um go check them out if you want to attend one of the retreats. And then that brings me to my final bit of news. So when I was speaking to Sammy, I just mentioned that I couldn't believe um I did some video kind of my channel checks and um as of this morning let me check we've got no i think i was only like 45 subscribers away from 3000 i just i can't believe it um that that 3000 people want to watch my flush tube journey <laughs> i've just got i'm honestly so grateful guys so 45 is not a lot and what's nice is is that i actually remember in january this january just gone 2020 22 <laughs> i did a 2k subscriber giveaway so over the year we've grown by nearly a thousand um so anyone that is watching either new or has watched for a while and hasn't subscribed if we if you could subscribe and get us that 3k goal i'll be so grateful and as a thank you I'm going to do a giveaway, hopefully in January or February, whenever we hit the 3K subscribers. Um, and obviously gonna have to think about the prizes, but I know one already because when I mentioned this to Sammy, she offered 
to give one of her full coverage PDF charts from her website, um, which is lizzylittleloops.com. Again, I'll put the exact link in the description um, to one of the winners. So there'll be a few prizes, but this is one of them. So thank you so much, um, Sammy, to, to offer such a lovely gift. Um, so, and just to give an example, um, of some of the th artworks, there's just a few designers, there's lots of different tastes for everyone. Mama's actually um, picked one. Sammy kindly gave Mama Flossibilities one of them. She offered me one, but even as she did it, she said, I'll get, you're welcome to just pick one, but I think you've got that many, you probably won't. And she's right, I, I was that close. There was like a Hobbit one and I was so close to saying, oh, I'll have that one, but I've, I've just got too many crystals. <laughs> 27 now I, I don't know it's just crazy i've got a problem guys as you know um but yeah so mom has chose one which is called um northern edge and she does them in several sizes this is the small one so i'll put a picture of that here how gorgeous is that so beautiful so mama has got that chart to start at some point um but i thought it'd just give you a taste but yeah if you could go and check out um, she's moving away from Etsy. She's going on to kind of just online. So if you just literally Google lizzylittleloops.co.uk, you know, I've, again, like I said, I put the proper link in just in case I'm saying it wrong and just go check her out to see if there's anything of interest from the full coverages so that you know that if I do the giveaway next next um i'll say next year now it is next year um next video that you would like to be entered into that draw so just kind of gauge if there was one that you would like so that you know when you're ready um but also just to check her out because she's a small business and she's brilliant and as well as the full coverages she's got her own charts that she created like the goth girl sal they're brilliant she's so talented please please go and check her out and 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 help a small business and just have a look and see if there is a chart you'd be interested in for um the giveaway when i do one so i think i think that's all my news that's quite a lot for me at the beginning i'm so sorry if you <laughs> if I've wobbled on a bit um but that's that's us all caught up so I'm going to pause here, get my bearings, and I'm very pleased to advise that we do have a Mama Flossibility stitching section today. Um, there is something I should have showed you prior, which is a picture of, I'll do that in a minute. And um, I'm very excited to say that she is one of the people, she, she sorry, <laughs> there's only me and her, so <laughs> one of the people. She, <laughs> she's the one, <laughs> she's the person that has an, an FO. It was very close to being an FFO, but hers absolutely blows my FFO out the water. So I can't wait to show you that in the next segment. And then we'll go on to, to my stitching and my FFO. Um, so yeah, very exciting. See you over in the next section, guys. Hi guys, we're back. Back with Mama section. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to show you um, that Mama stitched, which was, um, it's actually, this is like a third FFO really, because she, she stitched, finished this. Um, it was her small that she gave away at the retreat. Don't ask me why I didn't show you this in the retreat section last month. I completely forgot. Um, I've been so forgetful. <laughs> I'm so, yeah, anyway. So I'm gonna put a picture up here of the small she finished um, and gave away at the retreat. Obviously I don't have it because someone won it, you know, someone selected it out the the retreat box. Um, and the person who got Mamas was crafting Kirsty. I hope you enjoyed it, Kirsty, um, over the Halloween season. Um, so as you can see, it's this really cute um, cat in a pumpkin. It's very, very cute. And um, I asked, <laughs> it's a bit of a mystery project this, we're trying to work it out. So we think it's a free pattern by the blue flower. So if you kind of Google blue flower free chart cat and see if it's still available. Um, and she finished it into a little tuck pillow. Um, she did a really great job. I thought um because we're not we're not really established in making pillows often so I think she did a fabulous job um and I'll put another picture of the back and here um is the fabric she chose it was just an Etsy seller and it was this brilliant spider pattern on the back um and she cut it obviously to a certain point so you'd get it on the spider but it was really spooky really cool um so I just wanted to show you mama's little finish um for the retreat and i think she did a fabulous job 
Well done, Mama. So, now onto the big news. For those who've been watching me a while, um, Mama has been trying to get a finish on a full coverage. Um, now, I think she only started this last year and um, she worked out that if she did 500 stitches a day, she should have it done in time for Christmas. And I'm very pleased to say that she has completed her full coverage. Such an amazing achievement. Well done, Mama. Um, so I'm going to show... I'm gonna, she's kind of give it... So, right, so what's happened is me and Mama use a company called Picture Frames Express where you enter the measurements of your pattern and you select the frame you want if you want a mount and they'll make sure it fits to the size of your finished piece. So I went round and helped Mama measure and we did this before we washed it. And we stretched it like it would be stretched on a mount board to gauge as accurately as possible what it would be. Because as we know, if you're just a millimetre out on these things, it, the whole thing can go wrong. You've got too much white showing, too much of the pattern covered. It, so you've got you to like measure, you know, and measure, measure, measure. Um, so we, we did that and the frame and the mount arrived and then Mama washed it and then we realised something. So this is a top tip if you're doing it this way. Um, when you wash these, especially the pre-gridded fabric, the easy guide fabric with the grey lines, you have to wash them in very hot water to, to be able to get them grey lines out. You just can't get away from it. You've got to wash them in hot water. And obviously, not, not, not crazy, but it will shrink by a couple of millimetres. Um, and so when she then went to frame it, there was just a little bit too much white showing. So what she's done is she'd ordered a mount board and she ran Pitch Frames Express and said, look, this is what's happened. Can I order the mount just a little bit thicker? Because then it'll be back to what I wanted it originally to look like. And they very kindly said, yes, they've, let, they've ordered it. It's coming tomorrow. So what I've got here is the finished piece, just stitched, washed. And then I've just got the original red mount board so you can gauge what it'll look like. And then obviously next video, I will show you properly it all framed and finished. So we're literally like a day off being this an FFO, but we're filming today. We're just making it work. So this is Mama's finish. <gasps> Guys, how stunning is that? And this red mount just works so well. Um, sorry, it's obviously, you know, it's, I'm just holding it on. <laughs> Um, let me show it you without as well. So this is, the artwork is Ruben McHugh and the pattern is called Forest Santa. I think this is a very popular designer. Um, Mama bought it from Charting Creations. You can also buy this through Pain Free Crafts. Um, they, they kind of sell each other's, you know, patterns as well um, now. And I think it is absolutely stunning. So Mama stitched this one over one full cross on 25 25 count easy guide fabric and obviously it's been washed so the grid lines have gone out and i think she's done a fabulous job washing it and it's gonna it's it's not even fully laced on this yet it's literally got a few lines so it's going to be laced mounted properly and then this but in a bigger version a bigger size so that not so much white is showing on either side is going to arrive and then she's got a gorgeous frame for it that just it just everything she showed me it just was perfect for this piece um but i just think it's magical i think she's done an amazing job and i think if i'm i'm saying this right mom that this is her first ever full coverage completed as well but just the detail on the, the Santa, the reindeer, the toy bag, all that snow, all that white stitching. But isn't it absolutely gorgeous? And it's so my mama's home. It's so her aesthetic and decor. I'm actually quite more kind of old fashioned and traditional than my mama. Mama's more modern than me. And this just goes in her home so lovely. Um, but yeah, I know a few of you have started stitching this seam mamas um, and I just thought it would be lovely to see what it looked like finished um, just to spur everyone on. Um, but yeah, this is it. Sorry, I'm just showing it off. Isn't it gorgeous? I think it'd look nice here, Mum, actually. I might just keep it. <laughs> Very well done. So yeah, 
So that is it for Mama's section, but I think that's enough, don't you, when it's such a big full coverage finish. So um, yeah, so that's Mama's um, stitching. And now I think she's she's obviously absolutely made up that it's finished, but she's also excited to do other things. Because of the Christmas deadline, um, and I've said this before, when there's a deadline, sometimes it can get a bit... It can make it not as fun, you know, because you're kind of going, oh, if I, well, if I miss, you know, a day of stitching today, then I'm behind and I've got to catch up. So, yeah, um, I don't think she wants to do a deadline again, but she's very happy that, she, you know, she met her deadline and um, and she's she's got it up for Christmas. So, yeah, well done, Mama. So that's it for Mama's sec section and um, I'll just straighten up again and I'll come back with my stitching. See you in a minute, guys. Okay guys, back with the last section, which is my stitching and what I did in November. Um, so just a, an overview for those who don't know, I have six projects and each of them are allotted a certain amount of days. Most of them are five, um, an ornament one gets three and the full coverage gets seven. Um, and I just spin a wheel and it tells me what order to work them in. And because it's based off a 30 day month and I'm gonna get to touch them all for the allotted days, for the most part, I say, <laughs> unless something crazy happens. Um, so I'm just gonna go in order of when I stitched them in November based on um, either the wheel or if I made a conscious decision, because the first one I made a conscious decision to do right at the beginning. Um, and that is um, my first pattern I worked on in November was the Abbey Rose Designs Merry Christmas Pillow, which I haven't got to show you because I finished the actual piece. So you're gonna get to see it. So um, it was <laughs> it was allotted three days for the actual stitching. That's how many days I was allot for this ornament period I do every month. Um, and I ended up working on it November the 1st to November the 8th. That was the time. And obviously that's much more than three days. <laughs> November the 1st I filmed and I was going to stitch afterwards. Never did. So I actually had like from the 2nd to the 8th. And I was so slow. <laughs> I was so tired from work and then I had to do a lot of Christmas present shopping and I was literally doing like a letter a night. It didn't need this amount of time, but I just took this amount of time. So it took me, um, I basically was five days over what I should have been allotted. And because I knew I had five projects left to stitch on, what the easiest solution was is say, right, okay, it took an extra five days. So all the other projects are gonna drop a day. So if I normally work on it seven, it's gonna get six. If I normally work on it five, it's gonna get four. And I just did it like that because I wanted this thing finished. It could be finished for Christmas. I knew that and I was like, this thing is getting finished. I don't care how long it takes this month. So I finished the stitching. And then I went on to try and make it into the pillow that's shown on the front cover. Well, guys, I, I can't, like, I feel like I've given birth. I am, <laughs> it sounds ridiculous to say, I am so proud of myself for this cushion. Let me show you my pillow and then I'll go into more detail. This is my finish. <sighs> guys. I am so happy. If you saw my last attempt at a pillow in my last video, you will know how far I have come. I have to give a massive shout out to Vonna Pfeiffer um, because, I, the, <laughs> so let me explain. So my first issue was just getting it into a pillow and Vonna has fabulous tutorials. Um, she's a twisted stitcher, if you don't know her, most people do. And I was, you know, watching my corners and I stuffed it with like basically teddy bear stuffing. Um, you know, I don't really have any of the fancy stuff. I don't even have a professional sewing machine. It's like this little easy home plastic one. It's it's crazy. Um, there was some swearing involved. The the sewing machine broke and I I just I had to fix it. I was like halfway through stitching and yeah, it was a disaster for a while. I got really upset about it. <laughs> But I managed to fix it and I did the standard pillow. And then it came to this ribbon and there isn't really a tutorial on how to do this like fan effect. I mean, it's by no means perfect. Um, and also this loop coming out the back. So I had to just kind of work it out logically in my mind. And what I ended up doing is, so this is separate, this hoop is separate from all this. And I basically 
folded over a piece of ribbon of how much I wanted and I sewed it onto the hem because I knew that would then go inside and then poked this out so that when, and I left my gap, that you always have to leave a gap to stuff and then you hand sew that. So at one point it was just a pillow with this loop. I'd bought these beautiful rusty bells and then I had just literally a strand of ribbon and it must have took me about 90 goes. I just literally tried. There was I couldn't find anywhere a tutorial on doing like a fan ribbon. I just basically winged it until it looked right. And to say that that's the result, and I think it looks pretty neat, I am overjoyed <laughs> with how it came, across, came out. And these bells, I got a pack of 10 from Etsy, and they're just... And listen, it's so Christmassy. Um... I love my fabric at the back. Again, another Etsy seller. I'll look up who it was and put it in the description. And it's just the perfect choice for this front cover because it's just more, you know, berries and ivy um, to match the front. It's just exactly what I wanted. The minute I saw this pattern and asked Crafting Kersey lent me this pattern because I just could not find it in the UK. I am nuts for Victorian things and like traditional kind of Christmas look and... And I wanted to finish it exactly as it as it had been shown on the, the front cover. And I just can't believe that I've got some way there with it. I am over the moon with this. Um, so I've been hanging this from here. And it's been sitting here. And I've just gone past and jingle it every now and again. And it sounds like Santa's coming. Um, yeah. I'm just over the moon with that, guys. So that was my FFO and finish. That was the first thing I did. And as I do, this is how my rotation works. When I finish something, I get the reward of starting something new. That's the way I roll. <laughs> I can't start anything new until a slot becomes available. So this was an ornament and this, I only put ornaments in this slot. It's a three-day slot I give every month to ornament. So because I finished this, I've um, got a new project to show you. Um, that I'm going to get to start this month in December. So the next ornament I've chosen is another pillow. It's a limited edition kit by Lizzie Kate, and I won this from the lovely Dina um, half stitch cross stitcher on, on floss tube, and it's called Song of Spring. I'll put it that way. I think this will be a lot less stitching than that one. But basically, in this kit, this limited edition kit, you get everything to make this and this if you want to. Now, I'm just going with this at the beginning, but just to show you, um, I've got all the... And it's actually got some... Um, what was the fabrics again? Sorry, the floss. It's weak style work, so it's just what you need to make it. Um, the side fabric. The beautiful lace that goes over the fabric you're actually going to stitch on and then these lovely little buttons so i can't wait to do that so this is my new start in december when i get to the three-day ornament rotation I'll be obviously no longer doing this one. I'll be moving on to this one. Um, so thank you very much again, Dina, for that lovely giveaway prize. I've been wanting to do it for a while, but I had some things to finish. So yeah, so that's my next chosen ornament. I've put it in my winter cross stitch bag, project bag from Sammy at Lizzie Little Loops. Um, so yeah, that was the first thing I did. So as you can tell, I'm absolutely over the moon about that pillow. Um, Yes, and I've, I've learned a lot and I, I feel like I can I can tackle pillows now, you know. They are no longer my nemesis. I can do the pillows. So yeah, I think it looks lovely there with all the decks. It just looks obscenely Christmassy, doesn't it? <laughs> I just like keep looking over and I'm like, oh, there's quite a lot of decorations there. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, what do we move on to next? Right, so then I spun the wheel again and on the 9th of November, I got to work on my blend and place pattern, eggs all around. Love this pattern. Oh, Bunny Stitch has just finished this and it's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Right, so this is where I got to. Nothing is ironed, as you can imagine, the week I've had. I'm so sorry. Um, I was quite happy with my progress. So this is where I got to this month. Look at those creases. Um, 
Right, let's just go in a bit because it'll make it easier for me to hold, hopefully. So last time you saw it, um, I was working on these, oh, sorry, that is just rubbish folding, Lauren. No, it was actually these two. So it was these far right eggs that I was finishing off. So I finished them too. And you see this gold metallic around the row stitch? I did that in this rotation. And then I really wanted to do the green because I changed my, the call for sampler thread for the green around the outside to just DMC 92, which is a lot more variegated than what I've seen in the one it actually called for. But I really like it. I'm really liking the variegation. Um, it looks very like natural, like a natural, um, you know, almost like a lily stem. I'm really liking the effect. So I wanted to do that first. And I think that's going to be my goal is just to keep going round. Um, I'm really not holding this well, sorry. And just keep going round with that green and so I can make sure it meets up correctly and then I'll start working on the big eggs. Um, but yeah, it's coming along great. And to say he was scheduled five days, but obviously I could only work on it four because of this guy, um, everything lost a day. Um, he's been stitched on the called for, which is Chrysalis Cashel Linen 28 count. So that was my progress on eggs all around. So that was worked on between the 9th and the 12th. And then between November the 13th and the 18th, it was my full coverage. It was his turn to be worked on, which is Barging Through by uh, Pain Free Crafts. Artist is Chris Dunn. And um, I'm stitching on that two over two 25 count easy guide. Now, because it's the 4th of December, I've already spun the wheel for this month and the new project were to start December's rotation was barging through. So I've obviously worked on it. So what I've done is I've got another segment um, behind the scenes of barging through when I filmed him on the 30th so that I could accurately show where I was up to in November. Because if I showed you now, you're just seeing like four days of progress in the new month. So I'll enter that here. Hi guys, I just uh, passed Lauren here showing you my progress of um barging through in november sorry this is my bedding my christmas bedding so i'm sorry if it looks a bit crazy on camera um i'm gonna put here a picture of what it'll look like when it's finished and this is what it looked like last time you saw it and here is the progress we got up to this month so just more sky done, as you can see. I think the greatest difference is I went down here with this colour. This here is the end of the sky up to the point of the bridge and the bridge is going to go over. So that was quite a really good achievement so I could gauge how much sky I have. And this is the thickest point. It does go up from here. Um, I don't know if you can see if I go in. There's a few spaces here and a straight line. And this is actually a telegraph pole. So I've already kind of hit something that will be there and I'm gonna skip round that and leave a silhouette so I can do the sky. Um, just some stats on this. So um, on the actual days I got to work on it, I normally plan for seven, but as I mentioned at the beginning of my video, everything dropped today because of the Merry Christmas pillow. So I only got to work on this solidly for six days where I'm not working on anything else. Um, in those six days, I did 2,508 stitches. And with everything going on, that's not too bad. And in the month of November, there was 24 other days that I could have done my daily 100 on it. I do work on this every day if I can and put 100 stitches in. Um, but I only did seven out of the 24. So it wasn't too bad. I did get another 700 stitches in, bringing me up to a grand total of 3,000 uh, 208 I believe for the month and we hit 5.4 percent so that's it guys I'm just gonna I'm working on it from the beginning of December that's why I'm doing it like this just to to accurately show what I did in November and I'm working on it as the first one that was what was the wheel span um 
said to do so i'm doing this first and so i'm just hoping to bring this across a bit and a bit more so it's slowly just working its way across um but at the moment we'll just see sky for a bit um but it's looking lovely you can see a bit better in this light the variegation of this gray and kind of light purpley pink and then this darker grays and blues here um and then obviously smoke from the chimney okay so we'll go back to the main video now thank you okay guys so hopefully um that was a video of barging through that you just saw there and that you've seen the update now on that one lovely so then on the 19th november 19th to the 22nd i got to work on sleepy hollow which is a cross-eyed cricket collection got that in my spooky bag here's this one love this so he only had four days again so i didn't really have a lot of stitching time everything was reduced because of the pillow but it was okay so where did i get to oh, sleepy hollow hopefully this isn't as creased as eggs all around i'm sorry i will try and iron them next time it's just been one of those weeks um Okay, so this is where I got to with Sleepy Hollow. I'm actually really happy with that progress in four days. So we did the whole of the moon and the cloud. Um, we finished off the gravestones. I only had three done last time. So I did all of them. There's quite a lot of stitching then. The road was finished and I started the variegated floss for the first tree, which is in the color Indian Summer. Um, so I haven't finished the first panel still. There is the whole of the tree there and half of the next one. So um, that's going to be my goal on um, in December when I get to work on him for hopefully five days this time. Um, he is stitched on, I think it's 32 count Belfast linen, the haunted Belfast linen. But yeah, I think he's looking lovely. It really pops off this fabric. Fabulous. So that was Sleepy Hollow. Okay, what was next? So I spun the wheel again. And the next project, project number five, was worked on between November the 23rd and the 26th. Um, I had four days on this, but one of the days I didn't stitch, so I only actually had three days on this. And to say I only worked on it three days, I'm really happy with his progress. And it just shows me how much I could get done if I actually just worked on it the full five days. Um, the project in question was Roslyn Chapel, which is the Roslyn Chapel sampler kit, which you can get actually by going on to the Roslyn Chapel website and it's part of their, their kind of gift shop. Um, so last time you saw it, I'd just done the chapel and couldn't stitch on it last month. I can't remember the reason, but there was a reason. And so it missed its stitching. I think it was, was I ill? Did I have COVID or something? Probably. Um, so yeah, I'd only done that. That's where I was up to, just the chapel. Um, so since then, I've made some great progress. And I'm using all the items in the kit, all the colours. And this is where I'm up to. So this was achieved in three days. And when I say days, I don't mean like the whole day. I mean like after work, you know, because most of the time I'm working. So it's just either it falls on a weekend grey. And if not, it's like evening times um, when I say three days, but it just means three days of time to stitch on it. Um, so yeah, I did all the back stitching, nearly the page breaks here. So um, I just need to finish off a bit of stitching here and the other back stitching of this column and then go over and do this column and then I'll finish this whole page segment and then I can move across to the next one. I really want to get this one finished because this is my window into being able to start another full coverage, which is Simple Pleasures. I will not start it until something's finished and this is going to be the one that finishes um, next. And I know you might say, well, that's finished, you could have done it, but it, it's, it's specifically an ornament, so I won't swap in a full coverage on a normal week. These are what I just call normal projects. So it's until a normal project is finished that I could then 
start um, my full coverage. But I think it's looking great. And just to say it's only like five, six colours in the whole piece, this is like, I think it's so quaint. And I'm doing this for my partner because Rosalind Chapel means a lot to him and his family. Um, so I'm just going to put this in a simple brown frame. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with that. So that's Rosalind Chapel. And then finally, no wheel spin because there's only one project left to choose from. <laughs> so it had to be the wind and the will of self. And I'll just put a picture here of what it'll look like when it is completely finished. It was an 11 part salve all through this year and um, we've had all the pieces now. So this is, this is me now just working on it behind basically. So I was really hoping to get if you've watched my videos for you know i'm just working on that gray grid line you could see um i was really hoping to get finished on it um but i only had four days because it dropped from five because of the pillow and then i lost two days because of nana which is fine whatever you know whatever stitching nana was more important but um but that meant that i didn't finish that goal which is fine it's understandable so i'm not you know having a go at myself about that just letting you know why um so this is where i got to it's huge it's so hard to hold back so as you can see i've kind of nearly reached the top i've just got another square to do in the right that i've started and another square at the very top and then just make these arches meet so i'm really really close so i would like to safely say that unless something else crazy happens that next month's rotation of five days, I should be able to get at very least that grid line outline done. Um, and this has been stitched on 36 count ivory Murano. So yeah, get in there. Very big piece this. This is the one piece that I kind of like, not in a horror way, but I don't mind when it gets on. It's just an, it's, it's a, it's a fun piece. I cannot gauge for the life of me because some bits are full coverage, some's black works. So I can't gauge how long it's going to take me. This could take me years. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I'm just going with the flow with this one. I'm just enjoying it. It gets five days and we just get to where we get to. So I'm really not putting any pressure on myself with that one. Um, so yeah, that is my month of stitching. That was November. So I think overall, um, a very, very successful stitching month. Um, my greatest achievement is obviously this pillow. I just, I know I'm going on about it, but honestly, if you'd seen some of my past attempts, this is amazing to me that I managed to do that. I'm like, I just got like, what, look what I've created. You know, I just couldn't believe it. I was so proud of myself. So um, yeah, I'm really happy that I've already got my first finish of this new rotation after, you know, doing full coverages for years. And I'm starting to see the benefits of doing it like this now. You know, I get a, a finish quicker and I'm already getting to start a new project. And um, it's been, you know, it's been, a, it, it's been a busy few months. You know, I've had, I've had COVID at one point where my nan has been poorly. It's Christmas time. So I'm just, I'm just enjoying my stitching. I'm not putting any pressure on myself. And, um, and, I, and, and the plans for December is just exactly the same as what I've done here. Just spin the wheel work on it and i'll show you guys at the end of the month where we get to and um i don't know whether i'm gonna have a good stitching month or not it, it all depends on what happens and even though i get more time off christmas is so busy and i want to partake you know in different christmas things i don't want to just be sitting there stitching i want to you know partake so um yeah we'll just see we'll see how it goes but i'll come back in the new year hopefully we'll be doing a giveaway and i'll um, show you them so to everyone watching um if you you know if you do christmas merry merry christmas to you anyone who doesn't i just hope you have a wonderful holiday whatever you celebrate um i hope you have a lovely winter or if you're um my kind of australian viewers um hope you have a lovely summer but generally speaking i just hope everyone um is safe and well and um is getting some good stitchy time um, happy New Year to you all and I will see you in 2023, hopefully on January the 1st or maybe the 2nd. Depends how hungover I am probably. <laughs> okay guys, see you later. Bye, bye, bye.